Okay, so welcome everybody um, to today's ESW One event. So this is our 20 years celebration anniversary event, which is very exciting. Um, so this will be an event for um, just about an hour and we're really excited to have all of you join us today as well. Um, so a quick um, introduction of what to expect today. Um, so we'll have a very short sort of event overview and introductions. Um, followed by a friendly conversation with the group of the co-founders of ESWN, um, which will be about 20 minutes, um, followed by some breakout sessions for networking, um, and then we'll um, close on the hour. So during the breakouts, um, we have a fun activity plan for you um, on Jamboards, and the moderator will also be in your breakout room. Um, and you'll um, be assigned to a room automatically when we get to that point. So all aspects of this event, except for the breakouts, are being recorded um, for asynchronous participation. And we also have closed captions built into Zoom, and you can use the CC button at the bottom of your screen to show or hide these. Um, you should be um, muted for the duration of the event. If you can find if you find that you can unmute yourself, um, please don't. Um, and if you have any questions, send these through um, to questions at ESWN, um, which will be a participant in the chat list. Um, and remember to share your thoughts in the chat as the event progresses, like when all together this is virtual, so um, we'd really like this to be as interactive as possible. Um, if you have any tech issues, also send these through to questions at ESWN via the chat. Um, please also to remember to abide by um, our code of conduct, so um, remember to make this a respectful, inclusive ESWN event, um, to follow all of the um, aspects of our vision and mission, um, show respect to other participants um, and remember to be inclusive as well. So now um, a little bit of intro to the Earth Science Women's Network um, if you're um, new to ESWN and have joined us today. So ESWN is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to increasing diversity across the geosciences with an emphasis on creating and supporting a nurturing community, working for cultural change to eliminate barriers to a diverse scientific workforce and empowering scientists through professional development. Um, so it's made up of a board of directors and an associate board of directors, um, and we work together um, to put on lots of different events and run lots of different initiatives that um, I'm sure that you'll hear about. We actually have um, a bunch of really cool stuff that we're having this month, um, and the links will be dropped into the chat um, very shortly about these. Um, so today we have um, our conversation um, with some of the with, with three panelists, um, Meredith Hastings, Alison Steiner, and Melissa Butt. Now I'm going to um, hand over to Melissa um, for the next portion of the event. Great, thank you so much. And and before we get started, um, I just wanted to take an opportunity to thank all of you for joining us today but also to invite uh, some of our other board members who are here on the call, just as a quick hello and intro um, to everybody that's here. So before we start our panel, let's see who's on the call. Um, Sylvia, would you like to say hello? Sure, hi everyone. I'm the new secretary this year. Um, I'm a professor of aquatic biogeochemistry at Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio. And I am super excited for this month and for our our efforts to promote ESWN, and I'm excited for you all to check out the action because I got to put it together. Thank you. Myra. Hi, everyone. I am so happy to be here. Uh, I am Myra Oyola. I am currently at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, and um, I am the share of partnerships or the co-share of partnerships with M. And I'm very glad to see you all here. Please reach out if you have any questions or comments and uh, let's celebrate. Thank you. Maura. Hi, I am Maura Hannenberger. Uh, I'm an associate professor at Salt Lake Community College in Utah and the chair of communications. Thanks all for being here today. Great, thank you. Kareen. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Arden Dreyer. I'm assistant professor at Texas Tech University and I'm co-chairing the event with Rima. Uh, Rima, you had you heard her voice, but she didn't introduce herself. So I'm sure. So hi, my name is Rima. Um, I am co-chair of member events with Karen, um, who just introduced herself. Um, and 
I currently work in the world of UK research councils, um, but I'm a former enough for geochemist by training. Thank you. And we also have Christine, but I don't think that she can come off of mute at this moment. So Christine Wiedemeyer is our treasurer for Earth Science Women's Network. Let me do a quick scan. I think that was everybody. Okay, to introduce my own self. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Burst. My pronouns are she, her, and hers and I am the Vice President of the Earth Science Women's Network. I also am an Assistant Professor and the Assistant Dean for Diversity and Inclusion here at Colorado State University. And with that, um, I'm so happy to be here with all of you today and to introduce two of our panelists um, who were co-founders of the Earth Science Women's Network. So first I would like to pass it to Allison. Hi hey everyone, I'm Allison Stenner. I'm a professor of atmospheric science at the University of Michigan. Um, Allison, you're muted. Okay, sorry. I thought so I thought I hit on you, but maybe I missed with my uh, with my click. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm Allison Steiner. I'm a professor of atmospheric science at the University of Michigan, and with Meredith and several others, was one of the co-founders of ESWIN way back in 2002. And I served on the board, I think, from about 2008 to 2014. Thanks, Allison. And then I will pass it to Meredith. Hi, I'm Meredith Hastings. Um, thank you all for being here today. It's a really um, exciting chance to, to celebrate this organization and celebrate um, you know, Women's History um, and, and International um, Women's Day. Um, I'm Meredith Hastings. I currently serve as president of the Earth Science Women's Network um, and have been around since the beginning. And I am a professor um, at Brown University in, uh, in the Department of Earth Environmental and Planetary Sciences. Great. Okay, so as you heard in our start uh, when we began today, we we're going to keep this kind of like a friendly conversation. And I really wanted to take this time just to ask Allison and Meredith uh, a few questions. So I just popped on um, the slide here, a photo from 2002. So I guess that was obviously 20 years ago. And we see Allison, we see Becky, Tracy, Meredith, Arlene, and Amanda all pictured here. And so I wanted to ask both Allison and Meredith, you know, what was it like at this moment when you all were taking this photo? What was the scene like? Where were you? What was going on? What was running through your heads at that time? Um, I don't know who wants to chime in first. You're well, both smiling, so it was great. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if we're going to say the same thing if we remember it the same way. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so um, Tracy, uh, so at this point, everybody was kind of, um, I guess mostly except me, because I was still in graduate school, um, but most everybody else was about to graduate or had just graduated and were at transition points in their careers. We were all in Washington DC for uh, an American Geophysical Union meeting, which is when uh, the AGU for many years had two meetings a year, fall and spring. Um, and so, uh, um, so this was the spring AG meeting and how we ended up there was that uh, Tracy and I had the year before attended our first AG meeting together and she was um, a graduate student um, at the time um, in Princeton and in the geophysical fluid dynamics, um, the joint program that they have with the geophysical fluid dynamics lab and I was working as a technical assistant in a gap year between undergrad um, and graduate school. And, uh, and so we had become fast friends and we went to our first AGU meeting together. And because we were together, I think we did a lot more things at the meeting and participated in a lot of events at the meeting that we probably wouldn't have as a single person, not knowing anybody else at the meeting since it was our first um, experience of that. And um, we ended up going to the Atmospheric Sciences Luncheon, which at the time was not very well attended. And it was all these like, um, big names in the field, um, but all of these older white guys were at this luncheon. And it really was that feeling of like, when we walked in, it was like the record stopped playing and like everybody turned and looked at Tracy <laughs> and me. And if I had been alone, I would have just walked right out of the room and been like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. Um, but because Tracy and I were together, we were like, all right, let's go get our sandwiches and sit down with everybody else. So we're talking to, you know, these, you know, older guys in the field who were all very uh, prominent, established, you know, people I was reading their papers and my classes and, um, 
they started chatting us up and they were asking us all these questions about how to get younger people um, involved, more involved in AGU and more involved in AGU events. And they told us about how like special sessions can be um, uh, submitted by anyone. And we had no idea that was true. Like we thought, you know, it was a very different process. So we got excited about that idea and we actually submitted a special session. So that brings us back down to this, you know, following year at the spring AGU meeting and um, Tracy and I were co um, organizers. Um, I think um, uh, Arlene and Amanda might have also helped with that. And we were co organizers of this special session at the spring AGU. And then all the other women you saw pictured in that picture were um, attending the meeting and came by. We had a reception at the end of the, um, and the session was about like looking at policy driven versus policy relevant research and atmospheric sciences. And so, and the, because the meeting was in DC, it was such a great opportunity to actually bring in outside speakers who were in the policy arena. So, um, so we had this great day, we had this reception and, and all of those women attended. And, um, and then I think, uh, and we went to dinner together and that was kind of where we decided to actually formalize into some sort of group but i'm going to turn it over to allison because i would love allison to tell the story of how she met tracy and i uh yeah so i would say i, I was trying to get my dates straight and this also so this this was the spring 20 2002 and so yeah i'd submitted a session because uh tracy and meredith had told me they were running this session and so i was like well i'm going to submit an abstract to that session and so i did and i gave a talk there and i think it was maybe the spring meeting prior to that it was either let's see no it must have been like 1999 or 2000 maybe i think um so i was still a graduate student in 2002 also and so um i had been at another spring meeting i had um an advisor in a research group that was was very like, let's say, I'll generously say like hands off. And so I was just like, well, can I go to a meeting? Because I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I went to the spring AG meeting, which was in Boston, which must have been like 2000, I think, or 99. Anyway, something like that. And, uh, and so I was by myself at that meeting, and I didn't know anybody. And I kept seeing these two women at the same sessions that I would go to. And uh, not knowing anybody else, I just started following them around to whatever sessions they were going to, and then eventually like introduced myself. And that was how a lot of us met. Um, and like Meredith said, because we were all sort of roughly in the similar career stage, like, you know, within plus or minus a couple of years, we started an email group back when like having an email group list was kind of unusual. Um, and so it sort of started, it started from there. But yeah, I remember we went out to dinner and that, that picture was taken after dinner. Um, and we were hatching big plants, I think. Cool. So you talk about, you both mentioned kind of the, the idea of having the importance of a buddy. Now, I know I wasn't in that photo in 2002. I don't even know where I was in 2002, somewhere. But <laughs> um, I think about my first time uh, with ESWN, and it also was at an AGU meeting. And there was a, I don't know, the restaurant that was across from Moscone. What is it called? Jillian's? Jillian's Maybe yeah. Jillian's. Um, <laughs> um, I remember someone saying, oh, you should totally go to this reception. It'll be a lot of fun. And I was like, I cannot walk into this place by myself. Like, even if it was a bunch of women, I still was too scared to like walk into the room and be like, hey, this is what I do. So I, I called one of my friends and I was like, we should go to this together because like, I just need someone to like walk into that space with so I could feel, I don't know, comfortable. Maybe I'm too introverted. I don't know what it is, but, um, but I will say that was like one of the experiences that kind of really changed my perspective and, and really thinking about my connections in the field, because I like walked into this place, walked down past those pool tables that were in the room. And I just feel like people just kind of gravitated towards me. Right. And so I knew that this was kind of the start of something, maybe the start of like lots of different friendships, but also lots of different professional people who could really help one connect me, but also be that supporting group um, that that many of us needed right at those times. So, so I know you all didn't say, um, you know, you all were part of that picture in the beginning that brought you into that space. But in hearing from some of the other co-founders, I think they all had these very similar memories of you know what that moment felt like and why you really wanted to kind of catalyze and come together and really build something right. And it's I'm sure really. It's not surprising at all because any woman can do anything, but to really see how much we've grown and, and, and really fostered over the years is just really, really amazing to think about. That's awesome. And I, and I, you know, I don't think we ever saw like what this organization, you know, ended up turning into. And, um, you know, there were six or eight of us at that dinner and, 
Um, and from there, we, you know, would meet people and say, if you think that somebody would enjoy having lunch with us, like add her to the list. And so it just right. grew and grew and grew by word of mouth. And um, I mean, for many years, it was doubling every year. I mean, um, you know, just the number of women who were on the list. And um, and I think that grassroots effort and that kind of personal, you know, the fact that somebody said, hey, Melissa, you should come to this meant that you at least hopefully knew at least one other person we knew joined the network. Yeah. And I think that that established kind of a sense of trust that still continues today and that I'm really, you know, very thankful for because um, I think the feeling very much, even though you were emailing this like list and you had no idea who was on it, um, you know, which is different nowadays with Facebook and things like that, but, you know, you're emailing this list, people would email really, you know, really looking for advice, really like sharing their, their struggles and their challenges and everyone would respond in such a supportive way. And I think part of it was that when you were emailing the list, you were emailing whoever you knew, right? You were emailing someone you right. knew on the list. And so that's what you were thinking about when you emailed and you got this outpouring of support. And I think it's really, it's really critical for um, especially sustaining in the, the times that we're living in now. And Melissa, to the point you made about like, you know, buddy systems and thinking about networks, I think that is something that meeting this group of women relatively early in my career was really impactful because I think I often looked at like networking as being something like just something that wasn't for me. It wasn't my personality type. It wasn't like, um, you know, it wasn't like I was, I, I, I don't know where I put myself really on the introvert, extrovert spectrum. I think it depends on the day. Um, but I think, you know, trying to figure out what that means for you. And that's one thing I think that we realized is that like, there's lots of different ways to network and that can mean different things to different people. And right. one of the things that I've always loved about ESWN is this, it provides a space for everyone to figure out what that looks like for themselves. And they can see lots of different examples of how people do that and how they can use that you know, one from like to help them professionally, but also providing the personal support and like building the friendships that are really important for a lot of us to keep working in the field. Yeah, absolutely. And we also welcome like those of you that are here um, in the uh, Zoom room, in our Zoom room, um, to share any experiences that you've had with ESWN over the years. I see that uh, Galen said, you know, being one of the first oceanographers that joined ESWN, this was something that was really important to her and to being able to connect with other people early in that tenure track process, um, really kind of asking those questions that people don't ask, right? Or just saying, is it okay if I think about this sort of thing in this way? So yeah, um, I think that that is a really cool and awesome thing about, about this group. Mary, do you wanna show a video or what are you thinking? Yeah, so I thought we'd uh, introduce um... So uh, Mona Bell, who's also on our associate board of directors, but could be here today. Um, and she is the um, director of the Sea Grant program at University of Georgia um, and, and a really fantastic person and a really wonderful part of our um, board of directors. And she has started an oral history project. So I know um, in the chat, um, uh, questions at ESWN, our wonderful uh, Ramat, who's running uh, the um, inside of things today, um, posted um, in the chat the uh, link for the Oral History Project, and we'll be rolling out these videos over the course of this month to celebrate the 20th anniversary of ESWN. And I thought I'd share with you guys a few quotes um, from those. Um, the first one um, being from uh, Tracy Holloway. Tracy is a, a professor, and you saw her pictured in that um, uh, in that photo, yes. yes sorry, like, yeah, I clicked on share screen and like things went a little crazy. Um, so uh, you saw Tracy in that photo, and you know she was one of the co-founders of ESWN in the beginning, and um, has moved on to lots of great other things and started Science Con and um, and such. So um, I am going to share. I hope if this will work. I plan to join you guys on my laptop today and had everything lined up. And, uh, and then um, my charger isn't working. So um, I need to allow, hang on, I just need to allow Zoom access. Um, okay, I think that's gonna work. Um, sorry about that. So I wasn't planning to use my computer. Um, you'd think nowadays we'd get this all right, you know? All right, sorry again, share <laughs> screen. Okay, now it's working. Um, all right, so I wanted to, um, start with uh, a quote from Tracy about what was she, what she's most proud of um, given the 20th anniversary. And again, you'll start with seeing Mona Bell um, asking Tracy this question. Hopefully this will work. Resource. 
Um, so in light of ESWN's 20th anniversary this year, um, is there something that you're particularly proud of? Honestly, um, to me, uh, what I'm proudest of is the impact we've had on individual lives. I'm often at meetings and women come up to me and say uh, how they had been feeling very alone in graduate school, but by being connected with the network of advice through mm -hmm. ESWN or coming to one of our events, they uh, found the community that was helping me them feel like they belonged in science or to overcome a hurdle because i think sometimes we encounter a hurdle and we think oh that's just me or maybe i'm not cut out to be a scientist mm -hmm. but then when we see that no this is a hurdle that many women are facing many early career scientists are facing uh then first of all we don't feel so alone and second of all we have the resources to deal with it the solutions or and whether those are personal solutions or systematic changes that we need to make around the way science interacts with early career professionals and work-life balance or access to child care or you know gender equity and racial inclusion i mean whatever the issue is if you think it's just you then the solution is often well maybe i should go do something else but when you realize that you're part of a community the community is changing and that you're valued and your voice is valued to me that has an enormous impact and so it's had an impact for me i'm not sure that i would have stayed in science without eswn but it's also uh i can tell from anecdote after anecdote and some systematic social science surveys that we've done over the years um really changed the lives of many many people and that is what I'm proudest of. Fabulous. Including myself, ESWN definitely did change my life. Uh, it does create that sense of belonging. And uh, as you mentioned, by providing mentorship support, uh, it feels like you're connected to a larger set of women scientists across the globe who probably face similar issues. Um, so thank you for letting me share that. Um, yeah. um, I thought it was a, an excellent quote and, and it, you know, um, yeah. And I, I, I love like seeing that there's so many um, international women joining us today um, as part of this event too, because, you know, that's something that takes effort too for us to grow our network. Um, you know, I think we were much more passive in the beginning and it was, you know, people who came our way and we quickly realized, um, like Galen pointed out, you know, she was the first oceanographer to join because, um, we were so atmospheric science focused because that's, you know, we had all this group of women had all met through that um, and there were so few of us around. So we were, um, you know, connected to each other. And um, yeah. And so um, Alice, I don't know if you want to share any thoughts on on uh, Tracy's comments. No, I think, yeah, I, I feel the same way. I feel like that's one of the most important things is that helping people realize that perhaps, you know, the challenges that they're facing, they're not they're not always unique. I mean, sometimes they are unique. Sometimes people get are in really challenging situations that are. Um, but a lot of times the, the, you know, that sort of crowdsourcing of ideas or hearing, um, you know, one of the things that I really like about the network is that, you know, in terms of how we have discussions about different topics and the ability to kind of crowdsource different solutions for the problem that you might be facing and hearing different people's perspectives on that can be really helpful as you kind of navigate your own career. And I guess what I'll add to that is, um, I think it's it's the resources, right? Like people have been through many of these experiences um, and it's really cool just to see that, you know, there are a number of people who kind of led the way, right? Who we can go to. And I also think about, you know, Meredith talked about in the beginning, like you send this email and it went into this like abyss, right? It probably was a friend or someone that you knew in that space. But I found that when I, when I finally had an opportunity to meet people in person, I was like, wow, I feel like I already know you, right? Like, and so I think it was just building that community in a way where oftentimes that we just saw these words from people, but really then putting the faith to the words and, and the meaningful connections that really came, came out of this. This group has been great. Um, I know, Meredith, you wanted to show another video um, as well. I, I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, 
Um, so again, we have links past pasted in the, the chat and we can repaste those again later, but um, we have a few activities going on um, this month in an effort to, um, to increase some fundraising. So we are a nonprofit. Um, we had a grant for, um, for about four years from the National Science Foundation that I was the lead PI on um, when I started at Brown um, in 2000, uh, well, it was awarded in 2009, I started in 2008. And uh, so um, following that NSF support, um, we formed as a nonprofit to try to keep us nimble and allow us to strategize on the types of activities we wanted to be doing, we wanted to be supporting. And, so, you know, a big focus of those activities has been around professional development and supporting, um, you know, women and diverse individuals and people who um, identify as women to be successful in their careers. Um, and I think it won't come as a surprise to anyone that um, we need to redouble our efforts on that front, um, especially following COVID and um, especially if, uh, following the fact that we have, we lack women of color in so many spaces um, in the earth sciences. Um, and, it's, you know, the earth sciences are so critical um, to, you know, energy resources, from everything from energy resources to climate change to, you know, surviving the next storm, right? So, um, so we are fundraising. Um, in particular, we want to offer um, a series of professional development workshops um, this year, some of which will be focused particularly on, um, on raising up um, women of color in their leadership and management skills so that they can um, rock on and take over the world. So, um, so we have a silent auction and a raffle ticket um, experience to raffle off some ESWN swag at the end of the month. Uh, we have this amazing silent auction where incredible artists and designers and earth scientists have donated all kinds of fun things, um, particularly if you are into uh, Forum and Nifera, there's some really cool things. <laughs> um, and, um, and so lastly, you know, I thought we'd just end with one other um, quote and then move into some um, breakout rooms that were planned. But um, I thought we'd end with one more quote from um, Amanda Stout. Um, so Amanda was also um, pictured in that picture we showed um, from the beginning um, of, of when ESWN started. And uh, Mona also interviewed um, Amanda and I was really uh, particularly struck by her answer to the question of, you know, why, why give to ESWN? So again, we'll start with Mona and then Amanda will answer. Um, so why would you encourage anybody to get involved or give to ESWN? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I donate to ESWN every year, it's an important cause that's close to my heart. Um, and I feel um, for a couple of reasons. One is every penny that you put into ESWN is put to good use. It's, you know, I feel like there are a lot of um, um, large NGOs or other groups where they're doing good work. But I know that for ESWN, they they bring every little bit of value out of every little piece of money that they are able to get um, be, because the members and the leadership are just so passionate about the cause and give so much to it. So I know it is a good investment. Um, and it is, for me, a way to pay forward everything that I've received from my interaction with the group. Um, and, you know, I, I think that um, our world um, faces the most significant environmental challenges that we ever have had to in the next couple decades. And we need a strong, diverse, energetic, confident, scientific community ready to take those challenges on. So from my perspective, it's really important to support groups like ESWN that are helping to build that capacity for us to really tackle the problems we face. Wonderful. Um, and I don't think I mentioned, you know, Amanda um, has spent most of her post PhD career in, in DC working in, in policy oriented organizations and as it works for the National Academy of Sciences now. So, um, and, and that was something that she also talked about in her interview about you know, changing career paths and moving away from academia and, and having support of women around her who are like, that's great. And this is going to be great for you and great for your family. And so, um, yeah, just another example of, you know, the lives that ESWN has touched. And thank you for the comments in the, in the chat as well. Yeah, so we wanted to open it up now. Um, if if those of you want to share any any thoughts out loud with us or any questions that may, you may have of Meredith or Allison or, or myself, 
happy to take those or we're happy to see the love continue in the chat here um, on this wonderful Women's Day. Uh, <laughs> so I welcome any of that at this time. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Sonia. Um, yeah, I actually wrote what I wanted to say, but I just also wanted to add that, you know, ESWN has given me, I have been able to, like, I was fortunate to attend many AGU sessions, uh, like in person and uh, online, but this whole, I come from India and uh, I was uh, lucky to work with Jen Murphy uh, also. So, you know, the, these strong women, when I see from North America, it just really amazed me how, you know, I always, when I saw this uh, group of amazing scientists, I always, uh, you know, wanted to have that kind of team or like a group of people in future, of course, you know, we are building that <laughs> team. So, yeah, just wanted to say thank you because it's always a motivate uh, me a lot when I see everyone working so closely and encouraging each other. Thank you. Thank you, Samia. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks. All right. Agreed. Thank you, Benta. <laughs> <That's> so true. <laughs> um, okay. So we're gonna move into breakouts just for um, a little bit, just to have conversations with all of you that are here in this room. So it's not just the three of us talking on this call. 